All right, this is the ball bearing collision problem. The text is as follows. Two ball bearings are suspended from string. Ball bearing one is left hanging, motionless. Okie dokie. Well, then we'll just draw it like that. Bearing two is pulled to the side and allowed to swing back like a pendulum. Bearing two is moving at three meters per second to the left when it strikes bearing one. Okay, so in other words, we had to have sort of pulled bearing two off to the side here. And then it swings down. And when it hits this one, it's moving at three meters per second to the left. Okay, after the collision, bearing one is moving two meters per second to the left. And bearing two is moving one meter per second to the right. Okay, so we've translated that into pictures. A, what type of collision is this? Well, this is actually a little bit tricky to know unless you uh, apply a relation that we laid out for elastic collisions, okay? If a collision is elastic, we know that the relative velocity before the collision has to equal the relative velocity of the two objects after the collision, albeit opposite direction, approaching and then receding. And if we look at the relative velocity of these two objects before, well, it's zero and then minus, if we say sort of, yeah, let's see, uh, to the left is negative, to the right is positive. So that's negative three before the collision. And then over here, We've got number one moving to the left at two meters per second, and to the other one to the right at one meter per second. So you get three equals three. Check. So collision is elastic. If that was not an equality, well, it wouldn't be elastic then, would it? And we would know that it's inelastic, and then we can only apply conservation of momentum rather than both conservation of momentum and conservation of mechanical energy. Okay, part B. If the mass of bearing two is 0.25 kilograms, what is the mass of bearing one? All right, so we're saying that M2 is a quarter of a kilogram, and we know that Unfortunately, we can't use this relationship, even though it's nice and simple, because it doesn't involve mass. So we can either use conservation of mechanical energy or conservation of, of momentum. And I will use momentum because it's just a tad easier to use mathematically in this case, okay? Fewer things being squared. You do have to keep track of the signs though, because we're dealing with vectors. Momentums are vectors. So initially, um, one of them has zero momentum, and the other one has some momentum. Remember that three meters per second to the left times its mass. And then on the other side, we've got the first one moving with some final velocity, and the other one moving with some other final velocity. Now we know all of these things, right? We know their directions, et cetera, et cetera. I've left them all as little vector symbols just so we're not assuming anything about direction, but because we know them all in this ca case, we can start inserting that information really quickly. But we just wanna isolate the term that has M1 in it because we're trying to find that, okay? Here we go.
Okay. Beauty. Um, so we can divide both sides by this velocity. And then we start substituting things in. So um, we can factor out the m2. And then we're left with the final velocity of the second bearing. And that's positive 1 minus the <coughs> final velocity of, or rather, sorry, the, uh, the initial velocity of the second one. And that's to the left. That's a negative 3. Good. And then below, we've got uh, the final velocity of the first one, which is to the left, and is 2 meters per second. So uh, we have a negative of a negative here. Okay. When you put all of that in, let's see, so the negative signs cancel here, cancel here, and so you're left with 1 half kg. And there you go.